Huwag po kayo magalala sa akin, ma'am. Ayos lang ako. Kayo po ba? Hindi niyo po ba ipapaalam kay Ma'am Phyllis sa nangyari sa inyo? Umiling siya. No need, Leah. Ayoko mag-alala si Ma'am sa akin. Sa bagay, busy din si Ma'am Phyllis sa kumpanya. Lagi ba siyang nandoon? Tumungo sa Leah sa kainabot sa kanya ang prutas. Ngayong wala na po kayo doon bilang CEO. Hands on na po ulit si Ma'am Phyllis sa kumpanya ninyo. Lalo pa at may nasagap akong sekreto. Sekreto? Ano sekreto? O si Sarnia, hindi po ako sigurado, ma'am. Pero base sa narinig ko, may nawawalang pera daw po sa kumpanya nitong mga nakaraan. Kaya lihim na nagpa-imbestiga ang mami ninyo. Pabulong nitong kwento. Napahilamo siya ng mukha. Nitong mga nakaraan lang pala nawawala pero wala siyang kaalam-alam. How incompetent she is. And she was very disappointed with herself. Pero sino nga ba nagnakaw sa kumpanya nila? Tama kaya ang taong laman ng isip niya? Kaya ba ito kating-kate na patalisikin siya para pagtakpan ang kasalanan nito? Acer was staring at the phone he's using to communicate rain about his wife's condition. He sighed after knowing they almost lost their precious angel at sigurado siyang isa siya sa dahilan kaya na-stress si Annika. He was so happy to know that his wife is pregnant. Naas niya itong yakapin kanina nang makita niya ito at aluin, lalo na na magsimula na itong umiyak. He doesn't want to hurt her. Kung pwede lang sana siyang magpadalos-dalos ay ginawa na niya. But he has plans and he needs to follow it so it won't compromise the other people that are involved. Literal ngang patience is a virtue ang kalagayan niya ngayon. Muli ay bumalik sa kanya ang alaala. Noong mga nakaraang araw. Why do you want to see me? Ani na isang sinlamig na yelong boses ng kanyang lalaking kaharap. Mariin niya itong pinagmastan. He was very far from the man he used to know. Marami na ang nagbago dito. Magmula sa pananamit, ora at estado sa buhay. He wasn't the same corner Sandro the no one he knew. Well, Sandro was now the new head of Moriti household. Like him, He was a mafia here too. San damakbak rin ang bodyguards nitong dala na para bang may dala din siyang sangkatutak na tauhan. Nababakla yata ang lalaking ito gayong nangako naman siya na walang gulong magaganap sa pagitan nila. Kung tutuusin nga, Sandro can kill him right away. He was alone when he entered the lion's den. Nang umalis siya kanina sa kanyang kondo, palim siyang dumiratyo sa kanyang opisina. He immediately went to the rooftop and rode on his helicopter patungo dito sa kinaroroonan ni Sandro. He was the one he meant to meet tonight and ask for his assistance in Annika's safety. He can't rely much help from his men dahil hawak ito ng kanyang ama and Sandro will be the least person that Vincent will expect to help him. Ayaw man niyang sabihin pero para siyang puppet ng kanyang sariling organisasyon. Anyone he knows can betray him, except his trusted friends. Napatunayan na niya iyon maraming pagkakataon na ang dumaan. Because I wanted your help. Diretso niyang sagot. Nakakaloko ng umi si Sandro sa kanya. Stop joking around Voldemort. I won't buy it. Nailing pa nitong wika. Napabuntong hininga siya. Of course, he wouldn't believe him. Sino ba ang saraulong maniniwala na hihingi siya ng tulong sa lalaking ito? He was rich and powerful too, pero sa likod noon ay ang katotohan ng may importanteng tao siyang hindi kayang protektahang mag-isa sa ngayon. Annika's life threat is like a tickling bomb na maaring sumabog oras na magalit si Vincent. I'm not kidding, Morty. I need your help. Mataman siyang tanitigan ni Sandro. Bagya pa nitong inihilig ang ulo para siguraduhin kung totoo ba ang narinig nito. Pero maya-maya pa. Bumangis ang tingin nito sa kanya at kinawelyuhan pa siya. Are you mocking me, Acer? May I remind you? I am not the same Sandro you used to know before. I could kill you right here, right now, if I wanted to. Annika wouldn't like it. Anya na ikinatigil nito. Sandro scraped on his color sleeve, loosened up, at maya-maya pa, binitawan na siya nito. He knew it. Sandro's weakness is Annika. Same reason why this idiot was thirsty for power. He wanted to beat him and steal his wife away from him. Pero hindi itong importante ngayon. 
He can use Sandra's weakness to defeat his father plainly. Yung tipong hindi madudungisan ng dugo ang kanyang mga kamay. He wanted to do it in a legal way. Nang sa ganun hindi magagalit sa kanyang asawa niya. At kung kamumuhi ang mansiyan nito, oras na malaman nitong alam niya na hindi sakit ang ikinamatay ng ama nito. At least, naipakita niya dito na sinusubukan niyang magbago at itama niya ang lahat ng mga malimbagay na ginawa ng kanyang ama. After this kiosk, he will beg for her forgiveness, no matter if it's lifetime or not. Stop bringing her name here. She was innocent enough to be caught up with your dumb life, Acer. Puro nang galit nitong sambit. Sa tingin mo ba, hindi magiging ganito ang buhay niya kapag ikaw ang naging asawa niya? Your father is an asshole too. Just tell me what you're here for. At nang matapos na ito, then we can go our separate ways and kill each other if we have a chance. Naiinip na itong bahayag. I need your help in protecting my wife. Asshole! She's your wife! Why don't you protect her yourself? Matalim ang tingin nito ipinukol sa kanya. Idiot! Do you think I would be here if I could? This is your dumb fault! Kapag may nangyaring masama sa kanya, I will kill you with my own hands, Acer. That's why I'm asking for your help. My father would kill her in no time and is planning for my accident though. I don't know when they will execute their plan. We both wouldn't be able to make it if I would fall unconscious even just for a couple of hours. Sandro, paluwanag niya sa lalaki. How can I be sure that you're not lying? I don't trust your gods, Acer. Masungit itong Annie. Kills in no time, Sandro. Annie, yeah. He's sure he can rely on Sandro when it comes to this. Hindi nito sasayangin ang pagkakataon. He's been Annika's guard since their young years. He doesn't know kung bakit pinili nitong manahimik tungkol sa nararamdaman nito kay Annika. But he was thankful for it since Annika is only meant for him alone. Okay, if I say that you're serious, then I'll help you. Acer. Not for your sake, but for Annika. And as you can see, I have everything you have to. Kaya gagawa ko ng paraan para agawin siya mula sa iyo. Mayabang pa nitong sambit. As if he will let him. Gagawa at gagawa siya ng paraan para hinding hindi mapunta sa Annika dito. Why won't he just settle for his own wife rather than stealing someone else's wife? Balak pa yata nitong gawing kabit ang asawa niya. They are gonna have a ceasefire for now. But they'll fight again after he's done with his father. Matapos niyang kausapin si Sandro, muli siyang sumampas sa helicopter niyang dala at bumalik sa opisina. He went down to the garage to drive home back to Annika's arms. Pero habang bumabiyahe siya, he knew something was wrong with the car. Hindi nagtagal, nakasalubong niya nag-iisang truck sa tahimik na kalsada. It was driving fast, but the worst thing is, somebody was virtually operating his car towards the truck. And the next thing he knew, bumangga siya dito at nawala ng malay. He didn't expect his accident to be that bad for him to wake up days later after that day. Akala niya din mabibigo siya. But then, Zandro already planted a doctor on their side to diagnose him with systematized amnesia. He knew that Vincent would suspect the result pero bago pa man siya ni tumahuli, as well as the vice president can establish its move para patalisikin ang kanyang ama. But the thing that went out of control was Annika's scandal. He was shaking in anger that he wanted to kill the man who tainted his wife's reputation. He sure that this was all Kate's silly stupid plan to destroy Annika. She had done this kind of three countless times before with her enemies. Sandro's man was always on Annika's watch too, kahit na nasa ilalim na ito ng protection ni Rin. There's a threat in her life every day as they were preparing for their retribution. Nang maramdaman niyang may paparating, mabilis niya itinago sa loob ng kanyang vault ang phone. Hindi nagtagal, bumukas ang pintuan at pumasok si Kate, wearing her very sweet and seductive smile na kailan may hindi nagpatibok ng kanyang puso. Where's the papers, Acer? Did she already sign it? Excited na itong tanong. Yeah. That fast? Nalaka ang mga mata nitong tanong. Yep. Why? Is she supposed not to sign it that fast? You told me. We don't love each other. But why is she crying earlier? Patay mali siya niyang tanong. Hmm. 
I don't know. Maybe she likes you, pero ikaw, hindi. You know how asshole you are, Acer. That's why it's impossible that you're in love with her. Paliwanag naman ito sabay dampot sa annulment papers. I'll be the one to take good care of this favor for a faster process. Okay? Tumango naman siya. Feel free to do what you think is best, kid. You don't have time for that small matters. Anya at inilipat na ang tingin sa ibang papeles sa kanyang lamesa. It's been days since Annika got out of the hospital. Sa loob ng mga araw na iyon, pilit niyang pinapatatag ang kanyang sarili para sa kanyang anak. But even how much she forces herself to, hindi niya pa rin mapigilan ang sarili na umasang dadalawin siya ni Acer at babawiin ang sinabi nito. She felt so pathetic that every time the door to her room opens, she immediately checks if it was Acer or not. She was currently checking her cupboard to look for a pack of flour. Trip niyang magluto ng pancake dahil iyon ang cravings niya. Napasimangod siya na makita wala siyang stock doon kaya naman napagpasyahan niyang lumabas para bumili ng flour at mag-grocer na din ng konti. Ma'am, umalis po kasi sandali sa Sir Calder kaya hindi po kayo pwedeng lumabas. Magalang natanggi ng guard na nakabantay sa kanya. Napangiwisi siya at parang maiiyak pa. Pakaramdam niya ang OA niya sa part na iyon pero masama talaga ang loob niya. Kita niyang natataranta ang lalaka sa kanyang harapan kaya sinakyan na lang niya ang kanyang mood at tuluyan ng umiyak. Nagtagumpay naman siya sa kanyang gusto. Kasama niya ang dalawang bodyguards nang pumasok siya sa pinakamalapit na grocery store mula sa kondo ni Troy. She was just also waiting for the issue about her to Lilo bago siya umalis doon at sa sariling kondo na manatili. She was picking one of her favorite chips nang maramdaman niyang may tila camera na nag-flash. Hinanap naman niya ang may-ari noon at maya-maya pa nakita niya ang dalawang teenager sa stall ng junk foods malapit sa kanya habang may hawak na cellphone. Nang makita nitong nakatingin siya, mabilis itong tumalikod at nangmamadaling umalis. She say, paniguradong may lalabas na namang negative post sa social media tungkol sa kanya. Itinalukbong na lang niya ang hoodie ng kanyang jacket para hindi siya mapansin ng iba pa na nandoon. Binilisan din niya ang pamimili dahil baka dumugin siya ng media doon. 1,039 po lahat ma'am. Ani ng cashier. Inabot niya dito isang gold cord na pagmamayari niya mismo. Ilang beses itong isunwipe ng cashier bago bumaling sa kanya. Ma'am, your card payments was declined. Meron pa po ba kayong iba pang cards? Or you can pay through cash na lang po. Magalang nitong sabi. Are you sure? Maybe. It's just a technical error. Can you try it again, miss? Tumalima naman ang babae at inulit ang pag-swipe pero ganoon pa rin. Napalingon siya sa paligid at nakitang nakasimangot ng ibang nakapila doon. Matagal pa ba yan, miss? Baka bagong modus mo yan para makapambudal, ha? Malditang saad na isang ginang nakasunod sa kanya. Hindi naman siya sumagot at nakipagtalo dito. She was too tired to do it. Ang gusto lang naman niya ay kumain ng pancakes at sa kasamang palit pa, wala siyang dalang cash. Sorry ma'am pero ganoon pa rin po talaga. Ani ng cashier. Umalis ka nilang miss. Pinapahaba mo lang ang pila eh. Galit pang sabi ng isang ginang. She was about to walk away when she heard a baritone voice. Yes mind, miss. Agad siyang napalingon sa lalaki at napatingala. The man seemed familiar to her. Mabilis na kinuha ng cashier ang card ng lalaki. Sandali naman siyang natulala bago bumalik sa huwisyo. Mm, th thanks, pero wag mo nang bayaran yan. Babalik na lang ako mamaya. I insist. May condensation for bumping into you some time ago. If you still remember me. Swabi na tong wika. Tama. Ito yung lalaki na kabanggaan niya noong magkasama sila ni Acer sa mall. Ah, uh, yeah. Kung ganoon, babayaran na lang kita paglabas ko. No need, miss. Eto na po yung card ninyo, sir. Singit ng cashier. Tananggap ito ng lalaki bago sumulyap sa kanyang pinamili. Won't you mind if I help you? Care those? Tukoy nito sa grocery. Mabilis siyang umiling. Bukod sa magaan lang iyon, nakakahiya na sa lalaki. Ito na nga nagbaya tapos ito pa magdadala. Huwag na, kaya ko na. Tanggi niya. Tumango naman na ito at ngumiti. Okay, see you around. Anito bago umalis. Sunundan niya ito ng tingin. 
He really looks like Zandro in a younger version. Kinuha niya ang kanyang grocery at muling tinanaw ang lalaki. Paano nga pala siya makakapagbaya dito kung umalis na ito? Napailing siya. Saan niya ba hahanapin ang lalaking iyon na parang kabuting bigla na lang sumusulpot? Sinalubong naman siya kaagad ng bodyguard at magkasama na silang lumabas patungong parking lot. Sakay na po kayo ma'am. Kami na po ang maglalagay ng pinamili ninyo. Anito sa kanya. Hindi na siya nagsalita pa at sumakay na sa likuran ng kotse. Maya maya pa ay sumakay na rin ang dalawa at pinaandar na ang sakyan. Itinoon niya ang kanyang atensyon sa dinadaanan nila pero hindi nagtagal. Napakunot noo siya ng mapagtantong hindi iyon ang daan patungo sa kondo ni Troy. The road was familiar but she was confused. Kuya, saan ba tayo uuwi? Tanong niya habang binabaybay ang daan patungo sa gusali ng kanyang kondo. Nagtaka siya nang hindi ito sumagot kaya tumingin siya sa rearview mirror. Ganoon na lang ang panlalaki ng kanyang mata nang makitang hindi pamilyar sa kanya ang dalawa. Te Teka, sino kayo? Saan niyo ako dadalhin? Hysterical niyang tanong. Nagkatinginan ang dalawang lalaki. Suminyas ang isa sa kasama nito na patahimikin ang kanilang bihag. Kinuha nito ang isang panyo at ipinaamoy sa babae. Agad namang nanghina si Anika nang malanghap nito ang isang matapang na amoy. Unti-unti siyang napapikit kasabay ng pagsakit ng kanyang ulo. Nagising siya dahil sa ingi at kalusko sa kanyang paligid. Pilit niyang iminulat ang kanyang mata. Ilang kura pa ang kanyang ginawa bago naging malinaw ang kanyang paningin. It was a familiar ceiling. It was her room in her condo and she was lying on the floor. What happened to her? Bakit dito siya dinala ng mga kidnappers? Hello, Anika? Ani na isang boses. Nalaki ang kanyang mga mata nang makita kung sino ang nasa kanyang harapan. K Kate? Yup! Nakangiti nitong sagot. Inilibot niya ang tingin sa kanyang paligid. There were five men inside. Two of them were the ones who drove the car a while ago. So, her kidnappers is none other than... Kate. Anong kailangan mo? Matapang niyang tanong. Your life. I want to get your life, Anika. Your life will be the punishment of your stubbornness. Anito bago kumuha ng upuan at pinuwesto sa kanyang harapan bago umupo. Sunubukan niyang pumiglas at napagtantong nakatali pala ang kanyang kamay at paa. You see? Your life could have been a lot happier if you didn't marry Acer. You should have listened to me. But you're hard-headed bitch. So you deserve to die. Nalilisik ang mga mata nitong sigaw. This woman looked like a psycho. We are about to get an old. I signed an annulment papers. Ano pa bang gusto mo? Bulyaw niya. Do you think it's enough? Acer will soon remember you. But before that happens, you need to die. Die, bitch! Nagigigil nitong asik. Everything was fine until you came into his life. This is all your fault. You ruined everything we have. He doesn't love you, Kate. Stop your illusions. There is no everything between the two. Lumagapak ang isang malakas na sampal sa kanyang pisngi. Nasugatan pa ng bahagi ang kanyang pisngi dahil sa talim ng mga kuko ng babae. Shut up! Sigaw nito bago tumayo. Sunundan niya ng tingin si Kate at nakitang kumuha ito ng isang cutter. Anong gagawin mo? Natatarantan niyang tanong. She wasn't afraid for her life, but rather for her baby's life. Hindi rin naman niya maaaring sabihin dito na buntis siya. Lalo lang ito magagalit sa kanya at baka mas mapabilis ang buhay niya. Plain and simple. You see this? Iwinagayway nito isang puting papel bago inilagay sa bedside table ng kanyang kama. Bumalik naman ito agad sa kandaroroonan niya at yumuko para magpantay ang mukha nila. She looks like a blue-eyed devil wearing her evil green. The thing will be your suicide note. And this. Ano ito bago ipinakita sa kanya isang matalim na cutter? This will cut your wrist, Anika. You will die because you are ashamed of being a slut. So you committed suicide. Naintakutan siyang napatitig sa dala nitong patalim. Kate, please. Antay her. Motoridad nitong utos sa mga tauhan. Tumalima naman ang mga ito at kinalagan siya subalit nang magpumigla siya ay mahigpit siyang hinawakan ng mga ito. Kate, please. Don't do this. Umiiyak niyang pagsamo pero parang bingi lang ang babae. Goodbye, Anika. See you in your next life. Bitiwan niyo ako. 
sigaw niya habang pilit na kumakawala sa pagkakahawak ng mga tauhan ni Kate. Hulan mo ko, Kate! He sir won't forgive you when the time comes. He'll remember me. Maraming humalakak si Kate at naiiling pa. She's amazed by how brave this woman is. Since the first day she met her at the mall many months ago, she knew that Anika was something else. Maybe that's why Acer fell for this bitch. She was different from all the women who were linked to Acer. One main reason she needs to eliminate her. Ever since Acer went crazy for this bitch, all of her plans for the future with him shattered. They should get married and lead the mafia society together. They will become the most powerful family but everything went out of hand. Now, Acer wanted to quit because of this useless woman. She needs to be out of the picture or else. Acer will become useless to Vincent and it will be the end of him. And she can't let that happen. Mamamatay siya kapag nangyari iyon. As if Acer will know. I will make sure. Everything is clean, Anika. And besides, if Acer loves you, he will feel it. Do you know the saying? The mind may forget, but the heart can't. Sadly, it doesn't apply to you because he's not that in love with you, bitch. And you know what's funny? He handed me the annulment papers to process it right away so he can marry me. You're lying. Hindi kanya pakakasalan. He doesn't love you. Pinahid ni Kate ang luhang dumaloy sa kanyang pisingi. Marahas naman niyang iniiwas ang kanyang mukha sa babae. Oh, poor you. So much that I wanted to torture you. I'm afraid I'll run out of time. Nakasimangot pang saan ni Kate. Easy that for her pay isn't her forte. It wasn't fun, but Annika will be the exception. She's in a hurry to do so. And since you'll be dying... I'll do something special for you. Do you want me to write your suicide note? Dagdag pang pang-aasar niya. She saw anger in Annika's eyes which made her blood feel alive. Kinuha niya ang sulat sa bedside table at binuklat iyon. Dear Acer, I know you're mad at me. I know you don't want me anymore in your life. One main reason why you want to annul our marriage. I can't take it anymore, Acer. Just know that I love you so much. Goodbye, Acer. You're a psycho bitch. Sigaw ni Anika. Nakangiti ito nupi ni Kate ang sulat bago ibinalik sa bedside table ng kama ni Anika. The note was so you. Very touching and romantic. Have a nice sleep, okay? Ani Kate at tinapik ang kanyang pisngi bago bumaling sa mga tauhan nito. Hold her tight. May ikpit siyang hinawakan ng mga tauhan ni Kate. Kinalagan na rin ang mga ito ang tali niya sa paa subalit kahit anong pagpupumiglas niya. Ginamit man niya ang buon niyang lakas. Wala pa rin siyang magagawa laban sa limang lalaki. Nagsimula na siyang umiyak habang abot-abot ang kaba sa kanyang dibdib sa maaaring mangyari. Hinaklit ni Kate ang kanyang kanang kamay habang hawak nito ang cutter. Labis ang pangamba niya ng itaas na nito ang patalim. Shh! Stop crying! This will be quick, Anika! Anito sabay hiwa sa kanyang palapulusuhan. Umagos ang masaganang dugo mula sa kanyang sugat. Nalaki ang kanyang mga mata. She felt an excruciating pain that she can't compare. Parang mawawalan siya ng malay dahil sa sakit. Miss Kate! Someone is coming! Dinig niyang anunsyo na isa lalaki sa kanyang malabong pandinig. Shit! We need to go now, Miss Kate. Our informer said it's the Moride who's coming. Mabilis namang kinuha ni Kate ang kaliwang kamay ni Annika na kasalukuyan ng naghihingalo sa ipinahawak dito ang cutter bago tumayo at umalis ng silid. Annika was catching her breath while praying that someone will come to save her, though it's impossible. And if ever there is someone, she's isn't sure if she can make it out alive. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. Hindi ka na protektahan ni mommy. In her hazy consciousness, nakarinig siya ng lagapak sa kung saan. A set of warm hands picks up her weak body. She doesn't know if she was just hallucinating or everything was real. The familiar warmth, the familiar hands, familiar scent. It was her husband, Acer. But how come? Did he remember her already? Jesus! 
Annika! Bulalas ni Acer. His wife was now lying unconscious on the floor with a lot of blood on the floor. He has never been this afraid his whole life. Ngayon pa lang. Pabalis siyang kumuha ng tala at ibinalot sa palapulusuhan ng babae bago ito maingat na kinarga. Sa pintuan, nakasalubong niya ang magkapatid na si Zandro at Helios na siyang kasama niya papunta sa kinaroroonan ni Annika. What happened to her? Humahangos na tanong ni Zandro. She's heavily bleeding. We need to take her to the hospital right now. Anya saka ito nilampasan. Give her to me then. Habol ni Sandro. No, I will take her myself. Mariin niyang tanggi. He was so dumb worried that he wanted to make sure she'll be fine. Hanggat maaari, nais niyang manatili sa tabi ng asawa hanggang sa magising ito. Are you insane? There is no safe hospital for her out there, Acer. Stop being stubborn. Give her to me. Kontra naman ito sa kanya. Shut up, Sandro. I will get a doctor for her. Myself. She's my wife. Kaya akong masusunod. This isn't about that right now. Could the two of you just shut up? The patient will die in this state if you continue with your nonsense argument. Bulyaw ni Helio sa kanilang dalawa bago lumapit sa kanya. Do your mission well, Voldemort. Your father will be out of the country tonight. Pagkakataon na natin iyon. My family will get compromised if you fail. And you too, kuya. Set aside that feeling of yours and be rational. Set aside your personal agenda too. Sa lagay ninyong dalawa, pareho kayong mapapatay ni Vincent. Hindi naman siya nakasagot. He was stunned how a 15-year-old kid scolded the two of them. Pareho silang hindi nakaimik ni Zandro. I will take her with me. Ano ito sa kanya sabay kuha kay Annika mula sa kanya mga bisig at nagmamadaling umalis. Wala silang nagawa kundi maghiwalay ng landas ni Zandro. Kate used the back door fire exit of the building. Malamang nasa paligid lang sila at nagmamasid kung sino ang tumulong kay Annika. Pumasok siya sa bathroom sa ground floor at nagpalit ng uniforme ng isang cleaning service. Bago lumabas at malayang, nakapara ng taxi pabalik sa kanyang sakyan na nakapark sa restaurant ng kanyang kaibigan. He drove his car back to his mansion but before stepping out, hinubad niya muna ang suot niyang damit at nagpalit ng bago. Pagkababa niya, sinalubong agad siya ni Amelia. After he woke up from his coma and got discharged from the hospital, dito na ulit siya tumira sa kanyang mansion. His plan was to demolish this house pero hindi na niya iyon nagawa pa. And worst is, he needs to stay here and act like how he used to before. Good afternoon po, Lord Acer. Bate ni Amelia. Tango lang isinagot niya dito bago umakyat sa akin niyang silid. He was halfway through the staircase nang mapansin na wala na ang malaking wedding picture nila ni Annika sa salas. Kurat na siyang bumaba at muling hinarap si Amelia. Nasaan yung frame na nakalagay dyan, manang? Pinatanggal na po ni Lady Kate. Kanina nang mapadaan siya, sir. Saan naman niya inalagay? Pinasunog niya po. Pati mga damit na naiwan ng dati ninyong asawa. Napakuyom siya ng kamao. This woman was really something else. Sobrang dami na nito atraso sa kanya. One of these days, sisingilin na niya ito and he'll make sure she'll pay for all the damages she had caused to his wife. Walang kahit na sino o may karapatang manakit sa asawa niya. He will move heaven and hell and kill anyone who messes with him. Helios brought Annika to their mansion owned by his brother. Bert, their butler, opened the front door for him. Welcome home, young master. Bata nito sa kanya. Prepare my things, Bert. Utos niya sa lalaki. Bagya itong nagulat nang makita siyang buhat-buhat ang isang babae pero agad naman itong tumalima sa utos niya. Bert guided him to the room downstairs and prepare all his things for the surgery. Since he was practicing to perform the surgery at his age ay gagamitin niya iyon kay Annika. Sunod naman pumasok ang kanyang kapatid pero nang makita siya nitong abala sa operasyon, lumabas naman ito nang hindi nagsasalita. It took him some time bago siya natapos and thankfully it was successful. Mabuti na lang at hindi naging ganoon kalalim ang sugat ng babae. The wound shows that it was done in a hurry. Maybe because the perpetrator knew that were coming. Nang lumabas siya ng silid, siya naman pagbaba ni si Mira, his brother's wife, galing sa second floor. 
Like her usual stares, she was looking at him with a blank expression on her face. Ang kuya lang naman niya ang nakapapapalabas sa kahit anong emosyong nararamdaman nito. Who was that woman? Ghost Helios? Malamig nitong tanong. Anika, Voldemort. I'm sure she's familiar. Makahulugan niyang wika. Mabilis itong naglakad palapit sa kanya at pinukol siya ng nakamamatay na tingin. See? When it comes to his brother, Samira shows what she's feeling at the moment. And what right do you have to bring that woman here? He doesn't have the right to do so, but I do. Sagot ni Zandro mula sa kanyang likuran. Kibit palikat naman siya umalis sa pagitan ng dalawa. He is not interested in listening to their love quarrel or whatsoever thingy. His part is done so he needs to exit. Naiiling na pinagmasdan ni Samira ang kanyang asawa. She was so mad but this man in front of her seemed not to care about her anger at all. Of all places, Zandro. You brought that woman here? Don't you have any decency left in your body? Or you've already forgotten who I am in your life just by seeing her? Why, Samira? Who are you in my life? You're just a wife on papers and nothing else. Stop acting like a jealous wife. I know you're not interested in me in the first place. Naalibad bara namang tugon ni Zandro bago siya nilampasan.